welcome once again to vehicle maintenance and repairs.com Gary Della Cruz your host um, I would like to take this opportunity to wish all, all, all of you a prosperous 2020 may all your dreams and aspirations come true you know make it happen and you know uh, nobody else will do what you will do okay so good luck and um, all the best for the new year we have this car it's a Volkswagen Polo um, it's an engine code BLM which makes it a 1400 it's about a 2008 model okay I've got some things to do on it I have to do a service a general service and um, I have to do the cam belt and tensioner all right so I'm gonna break it up into two videos and um, let me just show you the car okay uh, you get the chime when your door stays open and the ignition is off but now the ignition is on doors closed so we don't have that chime anymore so now you have your normal uh, you know your warning lights when you put your ignition on okay um, very simple uh, straightforward dash you know nothing fancy uh, this is an air, con air conditioned model you know so it's got a well, one of the Volkswagen standard uh, radios in um, you know it's got your um, your aircon controls okay inside for inside the car with the normal fan vents and so forth okay nothing spectacular nothing uh, special and um, it's a base model so it doesn't have any controls on the um, on the steering but it does have a driver side airbag and it does have a passenger side airbag okay so the first uh, task i think uh, we'll do with this vehicle uh, we'll do the cam belt so let's go ahead and um, i'll show you how to do that okay firstly i prefer to uh, jack the car up on four stands because we need to replace um, the fuel filter okay uh, which um, that is why the back will be jacked up as well so we've got it nicely secured jacked up okay um, before we go ahead with the cam belt we need to we need to um, remove the, the the bottom stone tray it's uh, just a plastic old stone tray there um, it uses a uh, small one of the small torx uh, sockets so let's go ahead and get that done okay so being under the car here yeah, um, you'll see that here are one there's one two and uh, three and four which would be uh, two on the other side as well okay this is basically what it looks like it's a self tapper self tapping screw okay with a torx um, a torx head a very small uh, torx head okay so we go ahead and we, we loosen those four and uh, there should be six but on this uh, particular vehicle there are only five okay there's one missing in the front okay so once we have them them all loose uh, just simply uh, the whole cover just slides just slides out like that okay we put that one side and now we have you know we have the bottom clear so that we can access um, uh, we can access the front pulley we need to get to the front pulley okay so that we can um, take the front pulley out of the way so it is best uh, to remove the front wheel okay which i did and then this this inner skin okay this arch skin we're gonna have to take it out okay and uh, quite simply you know it uses those self tappers okay like um, the bottom plate decks there's just a few self tappers all around okay and then we'll take this uh, then, then the skin comes out completely all right so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do that So I've counted about 14 of those self tappers holding this uh, skin in. Okay. So quite simply take it out and just put it one side. And now we can see that the pulley is basically exposed. You know, and we can get in there. So for that we're going to be needing a size 18 uh, socket or spanner and a um, size 6 Allen key. Okay. But first, let's disarm the, the serpentine belt. We'll take that off. Size 15 spanner over there. And you turn it clockwise and it should... Uh, I'll show you. 
my advice is just to clean up once you've taken that skin out of the way okay because you're going to have lots of sand and things that is caught so whenever you bump up against the car you're going to get the sand spilling off so just get the worst of it out okay so that you don't have the sand and things falling all over your job okay so just simply scrape out the sand use an old broom you know or a paintbrush and just get the sand swept up out of the way okay so just remember your belt routing okay where your belt goes this is very simple simple one okay take a size 16 spanner over there okay like you're turning a nut tight you will find that the the, the self-adjusting spring load on the adjuster moves and that will allow you to pull the belt off its pulleys okay and disarm your belt so you take your belt and put it completely out of the way and that's as far as it goes okay so what we will now do is we'll go ahead and we will loosen up um, the pulley okay and the way that i would do that i don't loosen up the center nut i only loosen up the four allen key bolts that are holding the the, the, the the pulley on okay so we'll take a size 18 spanner to 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 hold that or to lock it or you can use a a socket or, or whatever um, is appropriate for you <coughs> and we loosen off these four um, allen key bolts So I'm, I'm using a, uh, a power bar, okay, with a size 19 socket, um, just to hold the center, the center uh, pulley, pulley nut. And then I'm using an Allen key with a long extension, uh, a long Allen key on a, on a ratchet, okay. And what I basically do is I let the, I just let the, let the bar lock up, okay, on the body. And then just apply nice firm pressure on the allen key okay try and keep it as straight as possible and then you'll just you can hear that sort of cracking loosely so when they loose you can just go ahead and turn them out by hand okay get all four of them out of the way and uh, there is just something to note on these uh, pulleys you know there will be an extra hole here okay and that extra hole basically goes um you know there is a little uh, a protrusion on the or should i say the crankshaft here because we are at the bottom uh, i'll show that to you now and uh, that is how you know that the pulley is actually put on on the right in, in, in the right position okay so these bolts that basically hold the, the pulley on is uh, allen key okay they're actually eight more bolts they're pretty short because they can't be too long, they cannot go right through the, um, uh, the gear because if they go right through the gear, they're going to knock up against the engine okay, and prevent the crankshaft from turning so as I said, we'll just take this pulley off okay, and with the pulley off, I can show you that extra hole we're talking about you see that hole there? okay, that hole, there is a protrusion on the, on the crankshaft gear see that? so that hole will just put nicely into that protrusion okay and keep it in position so that you can put your four bolts in and tighten your four bolts up okay so we'll take the pulley we'll put the pulley one side so now what we have to do is we have to take off the cover okay and quite simply um, the cover is in uh, two pieces size 10 there okay size 10 here so I stand on the side there and then of course um, a little bit further up we'll just have four clips on the top alright so I'll just go ahead and take a loose take the loosen up those bolts you might want to take the pulley off to get it out of the way okay that size uh, 16 um, bolt just turn it off and we'll get the just just the the, the, the the bearing out of the way okay because what we want to have is we want to have a direct um, we want direct access to that bolt that we need to get out of the way okay I have loosened it up and uh, now I can just turn it out by hand you see how much easier it is since that pulley is out of the way there okay so we'll get that bolt out 
Okay, you can see size 10 heads, six, six more bolts. Okay, size 10 heads. Got another one over here. Now it's not always easy filming this because the quarters are pretty tight so I'm knocking my camera around here but you get the zest of it okay and then of course there's one more where you can't cannot see it I'll try and take the camera very quickly so that you can see it from down here here we are okay you can see that size 10 there so I use a small socket set to get to it okay because as I say, we have a uh, pretty tight quarters to work to work in here. Okay, so you get the idea of where the bolt is. Alright, it's over there, so I'm gonna just turn it out quickly. Okay, so there we are. We'll just take it out all the way. Okay. And then it depends on how you know you'll normally find that the the, the plates you know you gotta take them off in sequence so it looks like we're going to have to take the plate off from the top first so right at the top we have uh, four clips let me just take it closer basically open up okay like that one got another one there got another one there And one more down on the side. Okay, just loosen up those clips. And with those clips being loose, the top, this top uh, um, part of the of this will come off. Okay, so we'll just take that, we'll take that top piece off. Okay, there are more clips down down at the bottom. Okay? And once these clips are all loosened up, okay, the bottom it's actually just one piece the bottom cover okay so we'll take the bottom cover out and now we've got our whole unit exposed okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna take this mounting completely out of the way okay so that we got access to our cam belt and then I'll show you how to time the motor you know uh, I normally time the motor before I take the old cam belt off because then I make my own marks and I'll put it back and um, I will be assured that the engine will be timed properly. So let's get the engine mounting off. All right, so just to give you a good idea about the cover, okay, that's why I said we had to take the, the top off first. Because if you don't take the top off first, this bottom piece cannot be pulled back this way because the top fits over it like that. Okay, the top fits over like that. So you cannot pull this out and, and unless you've taken the top cover off okay and then of course on on the bottom cover we also have two clips just be aware of that we have the two clips and then we have the three bolts you know the one in the center the one on the right hand side and the one on the left hand side and remember this is where your pulley your front pulley comes on okay i hope that clears i hope that clears it up for you quite easily so it's quite simple okay to take this uh uh, cam belt cover off and also we'd like to keep our work well organized okay so I use a, a parts tray which I put all the pieces that I've removed you know in, into into that tray so that when I'm finished with my job that tray must be empty okay there must be no bolts that are left in that tray all right so let's get this uh, engine mounting off so firstly this bottle will be in the way for the one bolt okay so we'll just take this bottle we'll just loosen it up we don't need to you know I'm not going to open up any pipes water pipes because by doing that I'm just going to be opening myself up for more work that means I've got to fill up the water and all that kind of thing so all we need to do is just to move it out of the way a little bit so that we can get our spanner um, in to loosen up the top bolt which is here Okay, we'll just loosen that one up completely. Stick out of the way. Okay, that's the nut. And then I do have um, support under the engine, under the sump. I put a uh, one of my trolley jacks there in position. So now I can just go ahead and loosen up these three bolts. Okay. Um, 
Let me just see if I can get you as close as possible so that you don't miss out on uh, on any of the action there. You can see those bolts. Okay, so we'll be loosening up all three of those bolts. All right, we'll loosen them up. You can turn them out by hand. Remember, I do have the engine supported with one of my trolley jacks. I'll take the camera back and just show you how that looks from where we are. So when that is loosened up, okay, you can see that the engine is now basically loose. So we'll just take that out of the way. That's what that looks like. Okay, we'll just put that out of the way in our, in our box. And uh, you can see we have the we have the trolley jack, okay, holding the sump up, okay, with the engine up. So now I find it best to take this unit out of the way as well. Okay, it's size one. There's one there. There's two, um, and I think three bolts. Okay, that holds that in. So take our size 16 spanner. You can see from the top here we loosen that up. Pretty tight. So we loosen that one up. Over here. Okay. You can see that one there. Okay, we loosen that one up as well. And then there's one at the back. There is no way I'm going to get my spanner in there. Okay, so I've managed to just get a socket in there for that third bolt that is so elusive you know it's just a very awkward position so I'll go ahead and just uh, take out those three bolts and remove that plug. so we'll just get these three bolts out of the way loosened up at least okay and then this whole plate will just simply come out of the way so this is why I loosened up the reservoir as well okay so that we can just okay so you just have to sort of you know maneuver it out of the way so there's basically those three bolts um, you know those three bolts that holds it okay onto the engine so once you have that out of the way you can now see We can see very clearly now, okay, you can see the cam, okay, you can see the belt, you can see the tensioner, you can see the water pump, okay. So now I'm going to line up the marks and then just show you how they actually line up, okay, and uh, I'll highlight the marks so that you can see exactly. Okay, so if you look very carefully, okay, look at the, look at the, the gear, this is the cam gear, you see there's a little dot on the cam gear there that dot should line up opposite that pointer okay that pointer is basically part of your part of your your cover your backing cover okay i'm going to highlight this with a little bit of tipex or paint okay but i'm just wanted to leave it standard to show you and then when you look very carefully at that gear you will find that there is just one of those teeth that is different and you will see that that tooth basically lines up with that mark there is just one of those teeth that is um, sort of flattened on the end okay and that tooth basically um, basically points opposite a mark on the on the cover Okay, let's let's take you there now. Okay, now look at that one. Look at that tooth. That that tooth there. Okay, that that tooth. It's just very slightly uh, cut at an angle. Okay, so that tooth. That is the one that goes opposite that line. Okay, so that is top dead center on your crankshaft. I hope you got that. Okay, it is really simple. As I said, this is normally what I do. I just put a little bit of white mark there, put a white mark there, 
Okay, you can see those two are opposite each other. And then on the gear itself, I'll just put a line on the gear. Okay, a mark on the gear. And then of course a mark on that line there, which will make it so easy to identify and line up. Okay, so now we need to loosen up um, the tensioner, which is basically this unit here. It's a size 13 spanner. So we'll take that out of the way now. So we'll just loosen up the tensioner. Okay, and as you can see, without loosening up the tensioner, it has now just loosened up the belt completely. Okay. We'll take the tensioner completely out of the way. Alright, that's what the tensioner looks like. We'll put the tensioner back and then we can now just peel the belt off. Okay, quite simply. Um, the belt basically runs, um, you know, it keeps the, 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 the engine in time. Okay, that's your water pump over there. Okay, your water pump pulley. Um, that's your camshaft and that's your crankshaft. Now you can see clearly we've got that all lined up there. We've got that lined up and when we took the cam belt off, nothing moved. Okay, so nothing was under load or uh, spring loaded or anything like that. So now we'll take the cam belt and we'll feed it in from the, from the crankshaft. We'll feed it on, but we'll first put the, 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 the tensioner on. I'll show you how to do that now. So we have a belt, okay? You always have to make sure that your belt is the same as the one that you've taken off. If you can read any of the markings on your old belt, you know, it'll give you an idea of how big, how many teeth the belt has. So if you can see this mark over here, okay, it gives a number with, uh, with a number 135 by 19. Okay, 135 means it's the amount of teeth that the cam belt has and the 19 is the thickness so it's 19 more thick with 135 teeth that's the old belt so now we'll pull it we'll pull out the new belt and we'll just take a look at the markings on the new belt and you can quite clearly see it's also 135 by 19 okay so we have the correct belt you also look at the profile of the teeth you know make sure that it's not uh, squared or rounded off too much or whatever compared to the to the old belt well look in the old days there was a distinct difference especially on the opals okay but nowadays they basically all the same then we have a brand new tension okay the tensioner basically it works simple sim simply that you can see that this is offset center okay it's not center it's offset so that means that this section here you can actually adjust the, 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 the tension on the belt. Can you see when you're looking at that hole, as you move it, you know, it's moving around the outside, you know, it's not, it's not center. So that means that if the belt is here and you move that, it's going to tighten the belt up. Okay, if that's a quite a simple explanation for you. But I'll show you um, a more closer detail of how to adjust. Okay, so all that we need to first do now, we need to fit this tension. So let's just dive right in. Okay, and get this tensioner fitted. Quite simply, the things to watch out for is when you put the tensioner in, okay, the, 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 this unit over here, okay, this metal unit, should go over that bolt, okay? Your tie-down bolt goes through the center, obviously, and then if you look at the, at the back of the tensioner, so if you're looking at the tensioner, then what I'm referring to is this unit, this unit here, okay, where my, where my finger is tapping on, okay, that unit goes over the bolt, okay, it goes over that little bolt, and this back section here has to touch the engine, like that, it must touch the engine flush, like it is doing over there, then you know that that tensioner is basically put in correctly, alright, I'll show you now how the adjustment works. Alright, so what I normally do is, I just make sure that my marks are lined up, 100%, okay, as I explained earlier, I feed my belt in, okay, from the bottom, uh, you know, you feed it through, okay, you can see there's lots of play on the belt at the moment, okay, let me just take the camera a little further up so you can get a better picture of it, um, then of course we take a, 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 an allen key, which we put into...
Let me just show you on the old tensioner. We put the Allen key in over there, okay, and turn it. Okay, so let's just look at the effect over here now. So I will turn, I'll put the Allen key in. Now you can see as I turn it, because it's eccentric, it's not centralized, it starts tightening the belt up. So now your next question would be, how tight do we make this carry? Okay, watch this pointer where my finger is, okay? You see that pointer? Just watch that pointer. As we tighten it, you'll see that pointer starts moving and that pointer's gotta be in the middle of that cliff, okay? And once you have it in that position over there, you take a size 13 spanner and you and you lock up your um, you lock up your, your your anchor bolt of your tensioner, okay? And once you've locked up your anchor bolt, that uh, pointer will stay in position, okay? You see that now? That pointer stays in position. Let me take you a little bit closer. You will see that that pointer is in position now. Okay, it's in position, it's in the center of that cliff. So now what we'll basically do is, we need to turn this engine um, a, few, uh, uh, um, a few turns. Just make sure that you have locked up your tensioner quite solidly. Okay, I would say maybe about 15 Newton meters. Okay, I'm tightening it by hand because I know the feel of it. Okay, so what we'll now do is, you take your size 19 spanner and you will turn your engine and turn it clockwise only, okay? Do not turn it back, turn it clockwise. And it does help to take the spark plugs out. I haven't taken my spark plugs out yet, okay? But I would suggest you take your spark plugs out. You turn it 360 degrees. Your crankshaft will turn twice, okay? Two revolutions, whereas your camshaft will only turn one revolution. We need to turn it so that it comes back for a second time. What we are doing now is, we're just making sure that the tensioner is working, um, you know, and that uh, the engine uh, is not sticking, it's not tight, okay? And once we've turned it back to its mark, we will now know whether this engine is in time or not. Okay, so we don't just go and start the car. You'll turn it manually first. So I'll line that marks up. Okay, now I'll take you closer. Remember, we have turned the crankshaft two revolutions and we've turned the cam one. So if you look at that now, you will see that that marks line up, so it is top dead center, and the cam is in line, okay, because the marks are lining up. And then what we will do is we will check that pointer once again and make sure that that pointer is actually lined up with the cliff, okay. So if it's in the center of the cliff, it means that, uh, you know, um, we are um, all 100%. So now, we can reverse the whole procedure. We can just fit everything like I showed you how to take it off. I'm gonna put everything back, including the engine mount, and then we can start the car, okay? You can actually start the car now as well, but I'd advise to start it with the engine mounting on because this engine's gonna shake all over the shop. So that is how it, um, uh, that is the procedure for replacing the cam belt, okay, and the cam belt tensioner. So if you need to replace a water pump, okay, you know, you've got that exposed now, so you can replace the water pump okay if, if needs be um, but we just need the cam belt and the tensioner all right so um, that's the job and now we'll just go ahead and we will replace everything we'll put the covers back you know we'll put the skin back we'll put the the, 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 the mounting back and so forth okay so i've got everything back together where it should be let's give her a start up Alright, starts pretty easy. So that is tell me that yes, you know the cam belt has been put on correctly. So okay. All empty, no bolts left. And that is the purpose for you know these uh, um, little bowls that holds the parts, you know the spare parts that you take out of the car, you know, nuts and bolts. So now you know that you know your job's done, it's put together and there's no bolts left, so that means you haven't forgotten to put any other bolts in. So I would like to thank you once again for joining me in my workshop at uh, vehiclemaintenanceandrepairs.com. If I have not said it yet, I'm saying it now. I wish you everything of the best for uh, 2020. Okay, I wish you all success and make it happen. Okay, until my next video, Gary Delacruz, vehiclemaintenanceandrepairs.com. Cheerio.